All right, guys. Sharpening the chainsaw chain by hand. Uh, it's a pretty simple task. Get your right file, just diameter file for the size of chain that you're using. And this is what you're going to do. You start to the front right here. Put your file in. You go forward. Pull it out. Go forward. Don't do this. It's in. Cut. Do this while it's on your bar. you got plenty of room. You have to lock it in the vise to make it easier. But you straight forward. That's all you have to do. And uh, these files usually do a pretty good job. It takes some time. But uh, it'll work. Always remember. File in. Line it up. Your angle. Go forward with it. And after you four or five cuts, tap your file to get the filings out of the file here. Remember, put it in there, get your angle lined up, straight, go forward. A little bit of pressure. And it really does a good job. Uh, it'll get the chain sharp, but you've got to take your time. If the chain's real dull, it's going to take you a while. But I'm going to show you now on a uh, with a hand, with a power chainsaw sharpener. I'm going to do this chain here and you have a degree wheel well you can't see it. let me back it up here so I can show you you have a this area right here with the different degrees and uh, you want to sharpen it it's marked you want to sharpen it at 30 degrees on the big chains here so we're going to show you how I do it I want the best way so you can see what I always do is my first chain over my first two, let's put it that way. I got me a little bottle of this white out, and I always mark this first tooth. Then I know when I get around to the other side, uh, I know when I've done that one whole side of chain. And this is a power chainsaw, not everybody's got one. This is this power sharpener. But I want to show you how it's done. And I always bring my, you have to bring this down here and line up. So what I have to do now is I uh, loosen this up. This, this is put tension on the chain that you're going to sharpen. Pull the chain back. Go up a little bit more. Just a tad more. That looks like the perfect fit right there. Tighten this down. And we'll bring it back just a little bit more. Lock the chain in. Let's see what I got here. A little bit more here. And when you sharpen a chain with these power sharpeners, if you see, when you see this device right here, I don't know if you can see it, this, it sticks up. That's your guide. And as you sharpen the chain, this actually starts going, it's kind of slanted. And what it'll do, it'll get down to where this guide. So at some point in time, these have to be cut too. Uh, chain hat, because if you don't, it won't cut wood. Because this is going to hit, and it's not going to cut wood. So you got to compensate for the, this right here versus the depth that you've cut on the chain. Like I say, not everybody's got one of these. You can buy them at Harbor Freight, you know, 39 This is a professional one. You can buy them for $39, $49, that little mini one. It does okay, but it's not the best in the world. So we're going to show you here. I got a light on mine. We can see, see and we're just going to come on down, give it a... Give it a little touch there. You do that, you push it forward to the next two. I pull back, tighten this down. Come in. Now that tooth is very sharp right now. Go to the next one. This tooth was out of angle, so whoever sharpened it last time didn't do a good job on it. This is on a used saw that I bought. Okay. 
these teeth are sharpened in correctly. I think they have a 35 degree angle on it, I'm not sure. Uh, Now we're getting to it. Like I said, take some time, but once you do it several times, you get the hang of it. You can go through it pretty quick. Sometimes I'll do a hundred a year for people. First enemy of a chainsaw chain is dirt, sand and dirt. You know, when you're cutting a tree and you hit the ground, that'll dull it quicker than anything else. And what it does, it, that edge on the chain ray, it'll, it'll round that off, so it won't cut. With, it won't cut at all. It's just uh, you'll force yourself your, to cut. You put a lot of strain on the saw and uh, that's not good. We're getting it right now. Uh, like I say, this sharpener that I'm using here is an Oregon made by Oregon. That's who makes a lot of the chain. And that thing, this one here sells somewhere around three hundred dollars right now. As Steel makes one, it's very expensive. Oregon is probably the best known, best used, best sold in the United States. Uh, unless you have a big saw shop and you do thousands of chains a year, you know, uh, the steel may be a good deal, I don't know. They, I think they go all the way up, you can get an automatic one up to like eight, nine thousand dollars, but you know, I don't need that. This right here serves my purpose well. And uh, I've not had a comeback on a chain yet. Uh, I seen a video the other night where the guy was showing a chain. I right, see here's my here's my white tip, so I know I've done this whole side. And uh, he was showing a chain. He, he was cutting some wood, and he uh, showed how the chain wanted to cut in like a, a half moon circle. And he was showing it. This side of the chain was sharp. This side here, the little tip was dull. Well, that doesn't that doesn't cause the chain to cut like that. What causes the chain to cut in a circle is when you get it in the wood, and see the wobbly right here. You when you the groove in your bar after use it gets opened up, and this chain will flop back and forth right or left. And what happens is when it goes in the wood, it'll it'll catch on once this side or this side. And when it does that, that's when it wants to cut in a half moon circle. Not the chain being dull on one side. That, that's not going to do it. It's this right here, the guide, the space in your guide bar. That can be fixed. Uh, it's, a, it's not a hard job, but it can be fixed. And uh, you have to lay the bar down. Uh, let me see if i got a bar here. I'll just maybe touch base with you a little bit. Uh, you take this bar here. And this this is this bar right here is in bad shape. It's going to need to be fixed. Let me see if I can show you what I mean here. Uh, the chain on here. If you if you can see how much I can move that chain, see it's going that way. That's what causes it to want to cut in a half circle. And what it is, is the gap in the guide bar is opened up, or there's a little trough in the, in the top of the guide bar. What you want to do, it's, not everybody can do this either, is uh, I have a device over here which I grind this completely level on both sides. Then you do what they call a closing, closing gap, close the bar gap. Lay this on a, on a vise, you take a ball pin and tap it all the way down. Tap it all the way down. Tap it lightly. 
and it'll start closing this bar up. Put your chain in it and feel the feel the movement of the chain. When you get to where it just just a little bit, that's when you want to stop. If you get too tight, you just take your screwdriver and tap it in where that area is at. Tap it real lightly, it'll open that guard by you. It'll take you it takes you about 35, 40 minutes to do a guide bar. And uh but it, it saves you from having to buy a new guide bar. We call it close close the gap. And uh it worked real good. I've done a thousands and thousands of them, and uh, that saves a person from buying another. This bar here, the lip, the lip right here is, you can feel the lip on it, both sides. This bar's got a lot of wear. You see the blue, the blue color right here. This bar's got a lot of wear on it, a lot of wear. And I can, I can clean this bar up, fix this bar, paint it, and you'll never, the only way you'll never know it's not a new bar is because it won't have steel written on it. But uh, I paint it the same color. I use the steel paint, this color white right here, but I don't put any decals or nothing on it. But the bar is like brand new. And any saw that I sell, I do that on there. And uh, that way I know when a person gets the saw and the bar and chain is going to be perfect on it. It's not going to be any kind of junk. So there's sharpening your chain. Like I say, remember one way with the file when you're filing not back and forth like you're trying to cut a cut something in two always one stroke forward one stroke forward and it takes about three to four strokes to get that tooth just about right so we're going to end that with this one uh i'm gonna make i'll make a couple more videos but i just want to get get the word out there on some simple things that the homeowner can do and some of your small saws you got different size uh, files too, the, the diameter of the file. And uh, the small chain takes a quarter inch file up to 5 30 seconds and 9 30 seconds of different sizes. So you got to make sure that the ch file you get fits the chain that you have. And if you go to any shop in place, they can tell you exactly which one. Or in your manual, it may tell you which what size file to get. They're probably 250 a piece, something like that. It's always a good idea to buy two or three of them so you got them on hand. Uh, you can get right many sharps out of one of them, but sooner, sooner or later it's going to go bad. So uh, then you have to get you a new one. So that's why I say buy two or three of them. You got the spares, put them away when you need one. You got it. You don't have to worry about going and buy one. Uh, we're going to end that out. This is New Year's Eve. And wish everybody a happy new year. We'll start off with something new next year. Catch you later.